What's up, lovers? Welcome to another episode of Hypercast here on Hyper Rabbit Power Go. It's a three man show today or three person show today. I heard three minute show and I'm like, all right, hmm. go. <laughs> three, two, one, go, go, go. Uh, Zach's not here. Well, he's here, but he's uh, he's been fighting some illness, so he decided to sit out on this episode. But I heard that um, he doesn't really have a voice, so he would be <clears throat> kind of useless. I mean, on. I couldn't even hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. I inferred it. It's okay. We're still going to have a good time. We're going to talk about some fun stuff. Um, if you don't know what this is, Hypercast is a brand new weekly show that we do here on Hyper Rabbit Power Go, where we just get to hang out, talk about stuff that interests us as individuals and as creators. And we try to pull in a group of topics that we, that we want to talk about um, that are somewhat related to either tech that we use here in the studio or storytelling devices that we're going to hopefully use or just things that we feel are very personal to us that we try to adapt into our life or into our workflow um, or work-life balance, whatever it may be. It's kind of a behind-the-scenes look at the team. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think it's – I've had a really good time doing this the last two weeks. Um, Last week's episode was fun. I I added a few more graphic elements to really sort of like break down a lot of the stuff that we talk about. Did you though? Yeah. I think 5.40 a.m. I came down here because the dog was upset at an earthquake. (laughs) And you were still like... Is there another earthquake? I think... I don't know what he was crying about, and Uh, it wasn't mm. about going to the bathroom. So Mm. I think it was an earthquake. And I saw you, and I'm like, that's happening. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that that happened. (laughs) That definitely happened. (laughs) And I'm like, wow. Is that fun for you, though? Like, is that your, like, flow state? Um, I feel like I'm able to get the most work done mm. when everyone's asleep. Yeah. Which like I'm that way duh. too. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way. Yeah. I feel like during the daytime we just have so much stuff going on that yeah. it's really hard for me to get stuff done. So I'm like, well, I'm either gonna go to bed and have to wake up early and not finish this in time or just play the long game and just stay awake and just power through it. Mm-hmm. So it also kind of depends on the day. Like there's some days where I literally can't do that. By 11 o'clock, I'm kind of done. Yeah. And I have to go to sleep. But last night was one of the nights where I was like, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good. I know uh, my girlfriend was mad at me because <laughs> she spent the night upstairs by herself. No. <laughs> she was like, she spent the night with the dog. That's true. He was like <laughs> crying outside my door, which he hasn't done that in a while. I think he just wants, wants to Wants attention. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're yeah. going to talk about that. We will. We will. What? We, we also, <laughs> we also <laughs> pull questions from Patreon every single week. So if you join our Patreon, patreon.com slash hyperrpg, uh, the amazing peop, uh, amu- amazing members of our community and the Thumper community uh, ask, have been asking great questions every week. So we try to pull at least like three to five questions um, just to get your guys' input on what you think about, you know, this podcast, how we run stuff behind the scenes. I think that's been the fun part about doing this is a lot of the feedback that we've been getting are people saying like, wow, this is so insightful. I never would have imagined that this is what it takes to run a studio the way you guys do it. And especially in this last episode, us talking about how we hack together different softwares and and Mm -hmm. practices to try to like get stuff to work the way we wanted to um, was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, But you presented a challenge last week. Oh, I did. Are we starting at the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, we're start I'm with ready. Those. So I am like into vision boards mm-hmm. because I'm that kind of person. Bless you, Malika. And you guys said, well, why don't you do a vision board for Hyper RPG overall? And I put it on my personal Pinterest, but I also made like a very ugly collage mm-hmm. to show and present to you guys. I'm so glad Zach is standing behind the camera so he gets to hear about this too. Uh, our printer really needs other colors of toner, so it didn't really come out that great. But I think the message uh, works. So I guess I'll go through all these images. Sure. And if for people who are listening on audio, I'll kind of describe what we're looking at. Yeah. So the first thing I wanted to do is to point out this picture of a tree this apple tree is five years old and hyper rpg is entering our fifth year Mm. and it it kind of blows my mind like the visual of like an apple seed from an apple i've eaten Mm. and then imagining oh like oh shoot like that's where we're at now and that kind of is like crazy but also as like a parent of this thing that i help create i'm like what is our child becoming that's still a baby yeah it's it's kind of like um like a like a young 
young person, you know, like they're mm-hmm. about to go to college or something. But it takes about uh, five to six years for an apple tree to mature into like bearing fruit. So it is now about to bear fruit into the world and provide for the world. And I'm thinking about hyper G as an apple tree. So uh, that's that. And, um, you know, kind of guiding its growth so it can be strong and healthy. And I think mm-hmm. we also talk a lot about growth at our company, um, you know, growing our channel, growing our views, growing our community, growing our number of followers. But I think I also want us to think about growth as a team. Mm-hmm. How can we better communicate? How can we better collaborate? How can we add more people to the team? That kind of thing. So uh, I thought a tree would be really good to represent growth. Um, in the upper right hand corner here, I have a, a screenshot from Post Ghost, <laughs> uh, our friend Knox, who was the demon from hell. Yeah. A very nice little tagline there. <laughs> Um, and I put that in our like little vision board because I want us to pioneer new show formats. I love the tabletop RPG shows that we do on Twitch. I love hyper heroes. I love the trailer reaction stuff. To me, I see those all as like separate show formats. And I think post ghost last year, we did something really interesting where we took, um, everything that we learned from doing everything else, but kind of evolved it into its own new show format. Mm -hmm. And, uh, as a game designer, you can't copyright your game designs, unfortunately, just like chefs can't copyright recipes, actually. But did you know you can um, copyright show formats? So, like, mm. there may be a future gotcha. here where we can protect the thing that we actually built together. We should try to copyright the word react. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> I am. Um, and I learned all this because I was uh, briefly like a game design consultant on Jeopardy. Because okay. they were trying to expand that yeah, IP I was ask about because that. they own that show format. So you could take that and put it on like the app store as like a Jeopardy game. Mm-hmm. And the mechanics people can copy, but the format itself with the name, gotcha. um, that's protected. So it's, uh, yeah, it's something mm. to think about in terms of like, can we make stuff that like we own, that we can continue to make money on, mm-hmm. uh, that people will recognize as like, this is a thing we made at Hyper RPG. So that's why I put a little picture of our demon from hell from Post Ghost. And then I have um, kind of uh, this map here, and it's a more accurate map uh, designed by a Japanese designer. The name is in my Pinterest. Uh, but I put this map specifically because it uh, most world maps put like America at the center and we're enormous. And so it's like Africa. It's yeah. actually very disproportionate. And I put a map of the world here for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, as... Americans, I think it's easy for us to think we're the center of attention, but one of our missions here at Hyper RPG is to create a inclusive community. And so I, I want to think, I want us to think globally. I want us to kind of reach out globally. I want us to strategize globally. Oops, I got so excited about <laughs> traveling, hug, hugging the world. <clears throat> and I think that can mean many different strategies. Like maybe let's go to more fan meetups. Mm-hmm. I really want to go to TwitchCon EU just personally, Same. but also Let's I want to make this connection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the flights are cheap now, so we have to like put these plans in motion now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just really like that uh, this specific version of the world map, the ocean is kind of centered yeah, because yeah. it's mostly water. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, but then it kind of makes all the land and all the people that live on the land even more precious. And I want us to think about that. For example, you mentioned that we have kind of a huge um, – community in India who really loves our trailer reactions mm-hmm. and when we were doing Power Rangers Hyperforce we had a unexpected amount of fans from Asia specifically South Korea mm-hmm. and I think we like never did anything for them yeah. you know and yet they were doing stuff for us they were showing up and watching our content so uh, I put that there uh, I also put these kind of can go together um, there's a little picture and, and it looks like um, a Japanese man bending over a microphone uh, in traditional dress and basically he is a rakugo performer and rakugo is a po- uh, form of Japanese storytelling and comedy and so rakugo performers um, they were very uh, popular like hundreds of years ago but also on TV and radio plays. Mm. And I feel like there are so many traditions of storytelling that we need to learn from. We talk a lot about learning from improv. We talk a lot about learning from D&D. But there are audio dramas. There are all like traditional folklore forms of um, oral storytelling, which is basically like what Kolok is. Mm -hmm. And we have all these cousins that I think we should learn from. Uh, Here's 
and here's another kind of related performer. Her name is Sarah Jones. I put her on the bottom left-hand corner. She is a woman of color, and she is also another one of those, um, like, uh, she's a theater actress, but is kind of an oral storyteller, and she plays many characters in one play. She's one of those one-woman play kind of people. Mm -hmm. She uh, is award-winning, and she actually performed in Los Angeles. I went to go see her show, like, two years ago, and I feel like all of us here who GM at Hyper RPG, who do creative direction, all that kind of stuff, we should be going out into the world and researching these things, keeping up with these things. And I would love for us to collaborate with people at that kind of caliber because yeah. they have like Tony Awards and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's very easy for us to, and we should feel proud of what we are doing, but other people are doing like amazing stuff. And because we live in Los Angeles, it's it's very adjacent to us, but we're not like really taking advantage yeah. of the wonderful creative community here. Um, also in the upper right hand, uh, upper right hand corner, I always mix up left and right. Um, there is an immersive experience that was last year and it was actually a moratorium that um, players or visitors could co kind of interact with. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with our current episode of Coloc that just happened where you brought in a mocked up cadaver not a real human being yeah. they're moral concerns guys we have a heart um but i think like that was in like i think pasadena uh, hmm. last year and i feel like there are all these people who are working in these spaces um they're usually featured on a website called no percentium mm. there's um which is called no percentium everything immersive and there's all this like immersive space-based storytelling it's kind of what Colock is trying to do it's what post ghost did and i think we should like take research field trips and like go to these mm -hmm. things learn from these people and maybe even collaborate i've with been them. to a few and every time i go to one i'm always thinking like what if i could bring a camera in here yes. and let an audience yeah. decide what like, i do like add twitch i've yeah. always <laughs> thought that of like this could be a th this could like i would watch this yes. if this were a first person point of view right. and i'm the one you know, me, the viewer, I'm right. asking the questions. Yeah. That'd so, be very fun to me. So this year I would love for us to like tap into like all those like interactive theater, immersive theater, escape room kind of stuff. And then finally at the center of my little vision board is our little picture that I had commissioned by my best friend last year from Rebecca Mock. It has like all of us kind of running forward. And the story behind this is it's inspired by a, Boy Scouts painting. Right. And I feel like we came up with some really cool, like, branding stuff last year. Mm -hmm. Our Thumper Creed, which a lot of people say every time they see that video, it makes them want to cry, and it's so emotional for them. And it was, like, very I, – I, I have, like, a good feeling when I watch that video still to mm -hmm. this day. Um, and then also just this illustration kind of highlights our commitment to creating an inclusive community, all moving forward, all ready to adventure. Uh, and I think we should like renew our commitment towards those values this mm -hmm. year in other ways, um, other content. I think maybe we should print out the art. I don't know why we haven't hung up the art in our studio, but little things like that. So that was uh, in a nutshell, my little vision board that I did this week. Look, I did the goal, and I hope you guys were inspired to maybe do one for yourselves. Well, damn. Next. <laughs> that was pretty damn good. I was thinking about it all <clears throat> week long. I, I was thinking about it in the... Like but the, I didn't put the pictures together till like, two days ago. Yeah, I was thinking about it a lot last week because we've been really trying to, like... As hyperheroes, we're kind of in the process of or I'm in the process of figuring out kind of like visually how I want to tell how I want our videos to look and feel mm -hmm. that's different from the way it looked last year because I think sometimes we get really comfortable just sitting at the table and it just being us three and just sitting there and then kind of like yeah. one camera, nothing's really happening. And mm -hmm. we're just, mm -hmm. I really want there to be a lot of like fluidity and movement and flexibility to kind of move around and recompose shots and just kind of think about from a cinematograph cinematographer's perspective, how can we, we love talking about movies and we love talking about cinematography and the look of movies and the color and all that stuff. How can we apply that to our videos? You know, so that was really the, when I went into the mood board thinking like, what can I, what can I pull from that would really speak to that? And for me, like the big thing was embracing different color palettes. So mm -hmm. I'll put, I'll put it up on the screen, but it's really embracing like, warm color tones and contrasting that with cool tones mm -hmm. and really playing with color because like hyper heroes even just like the identity of the logo it's a mixture of like really warm yellows and oranges 
but then also like sometimes we'll on the the backdrop of that logo it's very like midnight blues and i really want to play with with complementary colors a lot this year and that's something that i didn't really get to do and i feel like because of you know what you and zach set up and the look and the style and the feel of hyper we've always tried to because we have the equipment try to make everything look polished mm -hmm. with as much sort like with the least amount of like expensive tech as we can and i want to start kind of like doing that across everything that we've done and i think everything that we've done so far has looked really really nice but yeah. i really want <laughs> us to take the stuff that we talk about in our videos and start applying it to to the look and the design of stuff so i have this fun photograph it's of a of a slate a popcorn and 3d glasses and it's like neon colored and to me that really inv uh, evokes this like love of cinema but also being very playful and fun and a little bit nostalgic and a little bit kind of like going back to this like neon color blade runner sort of look and feel and that really came about after i was watching last week's episode of this show when we were talking about the color and the background and stuff and I never really realized it, but some of the stuff that we have back here, it has a little bit of this like neon, mm -hmm. nostalgic, like 80s Blade Runner type of feel. And I love that a lot. And we don't really get that feeling upstairs. Right. Because no. it's, you know, it's it's, it's, it's our living room. It, so. Our original logo and vision for Hyper RPG had yeah. more of that look. And I, I wonder if there's a way to bring our own take on that. Mm -hmm. Because How do we take like what we established last year with our rebranding and take little elements of this and sprinkle it in without like having conflict conflicting um, imagery. Mm -hmm. I th I think we could do it in a really cool way, and I think um, we've all learned a lot from Stranger Things. I think yeah. we're all fans of the show. Yeah. And uh, Kolok, because I think Kolok has its own strong visual branding, but mm -hmm. Hyper RPG is still finding itself. And one of the reasons why we started with this like cyberpunk thing in like the beginning of Hyper RPG's founding was we focused a lot on those IPs like mm -hmm. Battletech and Shadowrun. Mm -hmm. And we also thought, hey, you know, uh, there are the people who live the 80s and then there are people who haven't lived the, the right. 80s, but they're nostalgic for it. Mm -hmm. But it w became a little harsh and we wanted to create an inclusive community. And w some of the feedback was that it was very masculine. So like there was a lot of sharp edges and stuff. So... Then we did the visual reband with the color scheme. Mm -hmm. And this is the one I did where it was like white with pink. So it still had the kind of like cool, sharp, clean lines, but it was um, like pink and white instead mm -hmm. of like black and neon green. Yeah. And I, I love the idea of bringing like this type of lighting to the forest. Because yeah. I think natural textures, um, I wish we had more plants. That's why I put up the tree For there sure. like the, a couple days ago. Because um, natural textures, uh, plants, things like that can warm up and add organic lines to neon, which can be harsh and, un and kind of unwelcoming sometimes. Yeah. And I feel like it could also kind of like soften. It, like it's that. It softens it, it up. Yeah, yeah. It's an in-between of like a soft and hard edge. And I feel like. With color and, and, ac and accessories like that, it like accentuates all or of that. Or even like that skull, which mm -hmm. is like, it can be kind of a macabre image, but yeah. because of like the curliness of the horns, right. it adds kind of like a organic interest to it. So I want us to be very wary of that because I love Blade Runner. It is such a beautiful film, but it represents a harsh world. Just for sure. And it's like, yeah, how do you take the best parts of that visual look and apply it to something that's like, warm and welcoming and i think there have been movies that have done that where they've mm -hmm. taken somewhat something more of like a neon look and applied it to something that's a little bit more like i know i think of like um i think of wes anderson mm -hmm. very yeah. like colorful and light and playful and fun and i think like across the board no matter what we do i feel like that's generally the the message we want to convey to people is like it's warm and fun and inviting but like there are little things here and there that have their particular style and look and feeling mm -hmm. and um that was kind of, and I partially kind of want to start moving away from a comic book theme. Yeah. Because I don't really feel like Hyperheroes, while it started that way, I want the next evolution of that to be sort of embracing Hyperheroes being more about the people and the passion that we have for movies, but not necessarily it being because it's about comic books or superheroes. Um, so that's like, that's part of the reason of like, well, how can I take what we've sort of established and move it around? And it's embracing, yeah, that, that, that neon feeling, but also having these like warm, welcoming tones. Um, my, this thing that I pinned my map, it's not 
didn't get pinned for some reason. Did you put a map in yours too? Yeah. It's a styled a little differently. Yeah. It's more about like the tone of the map, but mm -hmm. definitely like the big thing about it was conveying the idea of reaching out and being, you know, like what you yeah. were saying, an opportunity hopefully for us to be able to go out and do more stuff where we can interact and engage with our community a lot more. You know, you mentioned uh, India. We also have a huge fan base in Brazil that yes. I was unaware of, yep. the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, we have, there's so many people who always ask like, are you going to, are you coming here? Are you going to come there? And even analytically, when you look at YouTube, you know, United States is big, but then right behind is like Mexico, United Kingdom, India, mm -hmm. Brazil, all these countries all around the world. And yeah, it would be amazing if we could, if I mean, we we could have, like venture outward. I know viewers in uh, Australia, mm -hmm. Japan, all over UK, Germany, like quite a bit of like little pockets. Enough that yeah. sometimes they self-organize without sure. us. Yeah. And I really contemplated like crashing one of those yeah, yeah meetups in <laughs> Europe because I was like, oh, this would be fun. Well, let's mm -hmm. just go to yeah. TwitchCon in Amsterdam. We can make it happen. Um, then I put up this like, it's I guess like a little collage of images from Blade Runner. And it's not from 2049. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about what's in the image. Yeah. It's more about the cinematography. Sure. And I really want to start playing a little bit more with like the lighting like I talked about earlier mm -hmm. and experimenting with different lenses and different cameras. Like I'm very tempted to spend 700 bucks on this new anamorphic lens that's for the black magic camera. And even though it's something that most people are like, well, that's so unnecessary. It's not necessarily a necessity, but it's more out of like just allowing ourselves to be a little bit more creative and, and seeing like how different lenses treat different cameras and all that sort of stuff. And I want us to be able to experiment with that because we can even apply a lot of that stuff to the live content that we do. Um, especially for, for stuff that's like post ghost or Colock mm -hmm. where it's very like story driven and some of it allows us to move around. Like we should be able to experiment with looks and how things can look different from show to show. And then this final image that I have on here, you know, it's somebody coming through a f picture frame in, in a, in, on a road and you can only see them coming out of the picture frame. The rest of their body is obscured. And it just plays more into that idea of like, how can we be creative and how can we sort of like play around with the type of stuff that we make, whether it's on Twitch or on YouTube, that kind of goes outside of the box of what other people are doing. Because I think just doing talk shows, it's a little stale at this point. You know, we've been doing it for so many years and we're kind of, we're, it's starting to evolve where it works for certain people but I think overall, it's like, how can you think outside of the box? And to me, this was a representation of that, of like breaking out of your boundary and trying something new and something different. Because um, I think also when you challenge yourself creatively, it will, just by the nature of it, it'll spring new ideas. And I'm those are the types of things that I'm excited to, to do in the new year, in this new year. Awesome. Nice, dude. Thanks. My turn. Uh, so I had a pretty busy week. Not very good at doing my homework. Uh, but I... Have. It's fine. I didn't put any TikTok videos up, <laughs> yet I still collect followers. Thank you. <laughs> they Thank open you up a new office here in LA. You guys are cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are cheating. Uh, I've got some artists that I follow on Instagram who I'm super inspired by, and I want to like sort of lean into this sort of, I guess, merging of genres that they often do. Um, and I get like I th I feel like I get sometimes the the hardest like visceral feelings out of merging genres that don't belong together mm -hmm. or wouldn't normally belong together there's this artist that he's very popular right now his name is will burke uh and he started you can follow him on instagram will underscore burke uh b-u-r-k-e he actually started this trend on uh i think he posted it to reddit but, I mean, his Instagram was already there. Uh, he started this trend where he posted a comic of Garfield, the cat that everyone knows. But it's mm -hmm. like the, the Garfield is painted in this really grotesque light, and he's black and white, and he's hunting down John uh, to kill him. And it started this, like, trend on Reddit of people making this subreddit called I'm Sorry John, where it's a bunch of, like, friendly childhood you know, characters from, from your childhood, nostalgic, yeah. all these, you know, we grew up with these cartoons. It's like, what if they were horror cartoons or mm. horror characters that are trying to kill their creators? I love his style. It's disgusting. And <laughs> uh, it's like bringing out the discomfort of the things you love. Mm -hmm. um, and there's really nothing, uh, I guess, sometimes I think art can be looked at too seriously. And I, I, it's, I just like looking at something and be like, that's gross. And 
uh, weird, and there's really nothing more to it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just Garfield, but what if he was bad? Yeah. And that's it. Uh, we don't have to think too deep about it. It's just really pretty and gross. Uh, but then there's this other artist that I follow. Um, it almost looks like, you know, uh, Junji Ito. That mm-hmm. a lot, Zach yeah. kind of Absolutely. reads like crazy to inspire him for Kolok. Yeah. Very, like, haunting imagery. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really haunting. Uh, there's this other f- artist I follow. Um, his handle on Instagram is Keebs, or L.A. Keebs, L-A-K-E-E-B-S. Uh, his name's John Lee. Um, and I really, really like the way that, similar to you, Adam, I, I really like the color palettes that he uses. He really keeps everything in a really nice color palette and uh, pulls out like a lot more feeling uh Mm -hmm. and i want to like take that like the artists do with still pictures and try to incorporate that into like movies and sketches that i'm shooting and shorts and stuff like i want to find the color palette and try to make it exist within that color palette you can do that so much easier whenever you have like you know every color at your fingertips on photoshop Mm -hmm. but I want to like, you know, like Wes Anderson is very diligent about that. That's a great example. Yeah. Uh, and there are other filmmakers that are super particular about color and I'm never really thinking about it. And I, I really want to uh, more this year. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And, and it's just, I've just been watching, I was watching a lot of movies at the end of the year and then I saw 1917 and I saw Little Women and I was like, man, it's not necessarily that the color in those movies comes at you you know like Mm -hmm. and and it it just really resonates with you but it just really made me realize how movies from different time eras use color to really transport you to that time yeah and yeah like wes anderson to me is someone who really understands how to complement colors together Mm -hmm. whether it's pastels or like really bright colors or or vibrant colors yeah and yeah like i agree there's so many photographers who photographers who I follow on Instagram or whatever and the the way that they will edit their photos I'm always thinking to myself like how do I capture that in a moving image yeah you know like how do you apply like what right. what sort of lighting do I need to use how do yeah. I need to focus the lighting like it's it's a fun challenge I think to really think about like how can you and I was watching a great Hollywood Reporter roundtable yesterday and it was all the actors and I was really just looking at the lighting yeah. and how just like smooth it was and the fall off. And sure. it looked like a really nice pristine image. And then I clicked back over to our podcast and I was like, I may have made these made this look a little too like strong yeah, and like sure. tone it down a little bit. Yeah, so it's like that balance is always Yeah, tough. pulling insp- inspiration yeah. from that kind of thing. I, I, like, I can't put really words to it, but the way that his, his colors... He, I mean, he does it like a lot of like slice of life stuff. You know, mm-hmm. this is just an old man sitting at a diner looking out the window. But like all of the colors help me feel it. And the way that he, like the complementary colors of the warms against the cools and mm-hmm. like all of his natural lighting, like he's he's really particular about the sun and what it's doing and the lights and where they're pointing and how that affects people's skin. Uh, it feels really like comforting. Don't yeah. really, I, I can't really put words to it. You You have to check out his art. It's so good, and it just, you feel like you're there. Uh, really pretty stuff. Uh, and then there's one more guy, Cal Kearns, uh, and he's similar to the first one of that he makes stuff that just looks incredibly uncomfortable, uh, and it makes me laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so discomforting that it makes me actually laugh, uh, and I want to, like, figure out what that is. Like, the blending of genres of, like, I'm uncomfortable, and, like, that's funny, uh, I I like that, and there are few people who can actually make me laugh uh, with discomfort. He's one of them. How dare you? And I, <laughs> I would Is like to... Is this the new challenge this week? <laughs> what? Make you guys uncomfortable? Uh, check out Cal Kearns, his stuff. You'll see what I mean. Uh, we'll put up some images of his it right sound- here right now. It sounds like you and I are very much on the same page of like, cinematography is kind of like this like, backdoor passion Mm -hmm. and now it's like okay let's let's take this to like the next level and i think a lot of it for me personally i never thought about it as much as i did until i came here yeah because zach cares about it so much because he comes from that yeah (laughs) and he comes from that world and that was you know he did a lot of that work yeah and i've always loved cinematography but i've never thought about how to apply it to my own Mm -hmm. projects and work right and now thinking about the new year especially like 
yeah, trying to sort of reconfigure how we're going to make videos. I thought like, yeah, yeah, I really want that to be a focus point, not the primary focus point, because I think everything needs equal attention. Yeah. But I definitely want to give it attention and make sure that if we're doing something that's themed to a particular movie, try to maybe see if you can slip in a little bit of the flavor of the yep. movie so it feels like it really ties together. I feel. I think this year I'm, I'm setting my own goal that I want to make something that I've written uh, that it's it's all completely under my control and there's no time constraints because yeah. right now I feel like that's what I'm doing is I'm I'm putting all that in the back just to like get it out because you know it's all about like we got to get this content out right now today uh right now live in this moment or you know tomorrow whenever like the news drops I have to get this thing out so it's still relevant like I want to just make like a cool story that I can shoot for the next year or two mm. or however long it needs yeah. to get like the look that I want because I don't really get to do that right mm. now um, um, I think in terms of cinematography, I think what's really important uh, and what separates storytellers from just like good visual designers mm -hmm. is using the elements of art and the principles of design to help facilitate the ebb and flow and the rise and fall of tension in your narrative. Mm -hmm. So I, I worked on... Um, a film that I was on and the director was a graphic designer. That was his background. And you could take any sh uh, still from that movie and you're mm. like, damn, that looks yeah. fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't necessarily help facilitate the tension and it mm -hmm. was a horror movie. So horror needs to have this kind of like, just like, it gets tense and then you relax a little bit and then you yep. get more tense and you relax a little bit until you're like climbing this mountain of tension. Right. Uh, for those of you who really love this kind of stuff, I want to recommend a book. It's called The Visual Story by Bruce Block. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty much like the like cinematography 101 textbook. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's fantastic. And uh, in it and in his classes, uh, he teaches basically like to graph out the narrative tension and then as the tension increases in the story, you increase the contrast in the elements of art. So when things are calm and happy and fine, you know, the lines, the movement, the color, they're all uh, more analogous. Mm. And then as tension increases then you go to the contrasting color palettes in. you know it's organic lines versus geometric lines it's small space versus big space it's uh rough texture versus smooth texture and increasing that um it's it's called the law of contrast and affinity increasing that contrast draws the human eye and if you on top of that are adding like a very intense story that's when it's really magic because yeah. uh when it's just like uh all style and no substance, like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Because also here, I, I consider ourselves storytellers. Yeah. yeah, and it needs to be style and substance. Mm -hmm. I, I shot a thing last year for a director who was really particular about the shots that I was getting yeah. and the movements and stuff. Uh, and then whenever we got to the edit, I was like, well, I was editing it too, yeah. and I, I always thought the script was pretty bad, but I edited <laughs> it, and they were like, yeah. why is it like this? Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't get why it's just yeah. not clicking with me. It's like, right. you wrote a bad script, bro. Right. This right. sucks. I mean, <laughs> it's always sucked. One of my, <laughs> it doesn't like, matter how good it looks when it sucks. Yeah. One of my favorite um, directors is Jean-Pierre Jeunet, who did mm -hmm. like Amélie. And he's one of those directors that sees the whole movie in his head first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then makes like very well-drawn storyboards of the entire movie. Mm -hmm. Then he takes his little camcorder and rehearses with the actors to kind of shoot the storyboard. Block it and then out. he like presents it to the team and is like, this is the movie we're making. What mm -hmm. a visionary. Um, but yeah, d directors who can't like make that movie in their head, mm -hmm. they just kind of get as much coverage as possible because they have to like figure out yeah. what the movie's going to be in the editing room. Mm -hmm. Which is also a way of doing business. It's completely it a, makes sense. a valid way. There are Oscar winning movies. Mm -hmm. um, They're like, well, we might need this angle, yes. so let's spend 30 minutes setting that yeah, up. And then we might yeah. need this angle, so let's mm -hmm. get that too. I don't mm -hmm. really know. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> but we don't right. really have those affordances here with right. like a um, small time budget team and uh, only so many cameras. Yep. Yeah. They're working very hard. <laughs> Thank you. Two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine. Yeah. We don't have enough you. angles, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we have also been working a lot on some sponsor jobs mm -hmm. coming up in February. The only one I can really talk about is our Altered Carbon one-shot RPG. It is a tie-in with the Altered Carbon tabletop RPG Kickstarter starting February 3rd and Season 2 being released on February 27th. Makes sense. And so there's like three things 
if you're an Altered Carbon fan, which is the Kickstarter, the TV show, and us. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be the first Wednesday in February. But with all that out of the way... Malika, you have the you have the floor for the very first topic. Am I? Well, I think the first one I also spoke first. <laughs> and I put discussion topic, Malika is lonely question mark. <laughs> so basically, um, a lot of articles went out last year about mm. there is an epidemic of loneliness, not only in this country, but kind of around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was different articles that talked about different groups uh, and the our government, the U.S. Health Resources and Service Ad Ad Admission Administration, whatever, uh, they, they put an article out about the loneliness epidemic with the older population, uh, but also Forbes put out an article called Millennials on the Epidemic of Loneliness, and then Wall Street Journal, The Lonely Burden of Today's Teenage Girls. And so uh, this is something that we talk about internally, but I don't think we've really talked about mm -hmm. in any videos or any live streams, really. And... Um, I think there's a, a few things I want to talk about. One is I personally feel kind of lonely. I think our job is kind of isolating. And it seems strange because it's like, you know, together with Twitch and YouTube, we'll get like 1.1 million views. So that's like a lot of people. Yeah. And you see the Twitch chat room like moving. And when we stream on YouTube, it's moving. And people are commenting. And, like, and it seems like we're surrounded by a lot of people. And yet, you know, when I'm at... <laughs> up at 5.40 a.m. and I just see like Adam just crunching on his computer alone in the office. I'm like, that that seems kind of lonely. I can't speak for how you feel, Adam, but I'm just <laughs> like, I, I have also had those moments or even we'll be together in the office, but we're just kind of- <laughs> We'll not say anything to each other for like four hours. We just like hours. do not say anything. Yeah. It could be even like it was me, you and Zach all yeah. in the same office. And it's such a small office. Like we're yeah, very we're close like to this. each other, mm -hmm. but we're just like pouring ourselves into the computer. Sometimes I see just like Lucas, you know, like crunching away and it can be kind of a lonely lifestyle. And when I talk to other content creators, especially um, Twitch streamers and YouTubers, like they're just alone all day at home. And some of them have these um, streamer contracts, like some of our Facebook streamer contract friends, they have to stream like 80 hours a month. So you, you have kind of committed to just like being alone in your Living room. Living in your room for yeah. all while. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And so I guess uh, one thing that I want to challenge myself, maybe people who work here and maybe those of you in the audience is like, get out like get out of the house, especially if you work from home, you may really identify with this. Maybe those of you who work in an office, maybe you don't feel the same way, but if you work from home or even if you're a stay-at-home mom, I know a lot of stay-at-home moms, even though they have the baby, they feel lonely, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like get out of the house and do something social. Uh, last night, Adriosa <clears throat> and I worked out at the gym and then we made a promise that we would take a fitness class together mm. just to like be around other human yeah. beings, make eye contact. It's a basic human need. Um, and then the other thing is uh, this one by the Wall Street Journal, The Lonely Burden of Today's Teenage Girls. It really hit me because it's, it focuses specifically on um, kind of girls in the preteen to teenage years. And that is our demographic for Colock 1991. We have a lot of young female uh, high school students, and they are – uh, they are different than high school students from like other eras. First of all, they are more likely to be best friends with their mom, not have a job, be focused on school. Their main concerns are how to pay for college and uh, the polar ice caps melting, which really softened my heart because I, I too love the environment. And uh, Apparently, from like 1990 to 2007 or so, um, like depression was going down in this demographic. That was the years when I was in elementary, middle, and high school. Mm -hmm. And then after 2007, depression started rising sharply in this demographic because social media and you're cultivating more likes than friendships. And there's a quote from this girl where basically she's saying like, I like long for these olden times or have nostalgia for these olden times where teens hang out at the mall with each other. Mm -hmm. And like people don't do that anymore. Yeah. And like that just like it just put a whole new perspective on like some of our newest members of our Thumper family where, yes, there's like this U-shaped curve of like uh, like senior citizens and kids feel extremely lonely. But like apparently like 45 percent of like women feel lonely and like 
one third of Americans feel lonely and like 23% of people in the UK feel lonely all the time or some of the time. Uh, you know, there's this loneliness epidemic and, uh, you know, people want to blame screens, but I think, you know, specifically thinking about young women and thinking about how I was lucky and apparently I lived in an era where girls were less lonely because they weren't so like concerned with like affording college and collecting Instagram likes. I want to think of like how can we come together as a community to support each other like through this time and through uh, the world changing and technology rapidly evolving the world. Um, and I think tabletop RPGs are fantastic. So if you're like part of a regular tabletop RPG group, that really helps. Um, before I did Power Rangers Hyperforce, I would go to our local um, board gaming store to play a D&D game, which is crazy because I play them all the time on the channel. Mm -hmm. But just to like, so that I could be myself. And I recently in Los Angeles joined a people of color tabletop group just to feel like a sense of community outside of like our own studio. But um, I've been v thinking very deeply about this and there is no way that we can meet and spend one-on-one -on -one time with everybody in our community, even though I really want to. But I wonder if there's something that we could do to empower like leaders in our own community to self-organize. Yeah. Um, I know the Hyperforce fans, I think like two years ago, met up like in London at a Harry Potter themed bar and like did nerdy things to each other and with each other. And I, I just want to see more of that. And I want to know if us as an organization can do something to help facilitate this because Loneliness sucks, and now there are publicized, um, published stories about, um, published studies about how it has a very negative impact to your health mm -hmm. and, like, well-being. So, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about that. I know we talk about it a lot. Like, yeah. damn, there are some community members who spend so much time with us because we live stream, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, like, 25 30 hours 40 yeah. hours a mm -hmm. week sometimes and some of our viewers i feel like spend a they almost watch everything yeah you know? and it's like you know uh are they getting a sense of community from watching our live streams does it make them feel lonely or like i i want to know about these things so it's kind of a question to you guys let mm -hmm. me know in the comments and i stuff. think uh the the discord mm -hmm. that we have and our twitch chat are kind of like the the best things we have right now that can like capture everyone, I guess, yeah. because like our, yeah, I think, yes, like first of all, from our perspective, streaming, you're sitting here alone, you know, or with the same people every day. It's like, I'm not getting out with mm -hmm. like people. Uh, but then from their perspective, I do think that that is a lonely environment to just be watching. Yeah. Cause you might think, you know, for a moment that you're getting that connection, yeah. but then you see them, you know, talking to someone else and it's like, oh, they're, you know, they're streaming. It's not yeah. me and this person. Uh, but it's like, if you get in the chat and you're talking to those other people, that's, that's where the community is. Uh, and also the discord. And I think that's the easiest, like lowest threshold because, you know, thinking about like where I grew up, I couldn't just go out and meet people. There's yeah. like, there's nobody around. Yet, I couldn't just go to a board game meetup. They don't have board game meetups. Yet uh, people in cities, according to these studies, are like the loneliest. Exactly. And I crazy. think that that's what, yeah. that's what it was. It was kind of forced to mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't have anything to do. So I'm going to have, I'm just going to go shoot the shit with my friends. Yeah. Uh, and that sort of cures all loneliness is like, we don't have anything else to do. So we'll mm -hmm. hang out with each other. Uh, but I think the discord being there is like it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't ma matter how old you are you have access to the internet obviously that's the that's the one little qualifier that if we you, all have in you, common yeah. yeah if you are our fan you probably watch us on the internet hop in our discord and talk to people uh, uh so you didn't know about the group of people i mail dvds to <laughs> 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 that and could they'll, be a thing. they'll send you a letter back <laughs> right uh that'd be cool yeah that'd be pretty cool but it's um I, yeah, and I don't know what, like, maybe gaming with the community more, mm -hmm. some some weeknights, like, some late-night game streams where we can just talk with people. and I, I know we have a hugs room if you just feel like you need somebody to listen. Yeah. yeah. That's a very important, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I know just from my own experience, when I worked in visual effects for the first, like, five years of my my professional career, yeah. you know, you're around people all the mm -hmm. time and it's different than here. Yes, we're all in the same office yeah. together, but there's like 300 people. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're engaging, interacting with a lot of different people and we were pretty good about going out after work and spending time together and then I saw a lot of those people on the weekends and stuff. So it kind of does become a bit of an extended family, but because there's so many, you have the opportunity to do a lot of different things with yeah. different groups of people. Mm -hmm. 
then once I started getting into YouTube stuff, it's kind of how it is a little bit, it's not as extreme as it used to be, but it was very much like my head in the computer, 12, 14, sometimes more hours during the day. And it was like Monday through Sunday, just every single day. And it really, you do start to feel, be quiet, computer, stop listening. <laughs> you She's do, like, are you lonely? Yeah. You do start to feel lonelier and lonelier and mm -hmm. lonelier. I remember after like a year and a half of doing that, <clears throat> this was after our company had moved to Toronto and I was like, I'm not going to go. I don't want to go and yeah. all this stuff. So like for a year, I was just working on YouTube stuff and I did get very, very lonely and depressed and yeah. sad. And I was like, why yeah. am I burying my head in my computer for 18 hours a day and just being depressed and sad. So you really do have to like break out of that yeah. and you have to find a way of like, okay, cool. How do I change my lifestyle or how do I start integrating other people and more activities where I can get out and go do stuff. And I just started like little by little. It was like, cool, I'm going to go for a walk in Glendale and I'm going to go to the movie theater mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to go to the bookstore. And it was just like doing more of more of that stuff. And then it wasn't until I moved into the house with you guys yeah. that I was like, Oh, great. I can work from home, but I can also get out of the house yeah. and there's people around all right, the time. Right. Yeah. And it I feel does help. It, it really helped. And, I, and as much as we get like crazy amount of foot traffic here throughout the week sometimes. I appreciate it sometimes. Yeah. Like <laughs> I like yesterday, it was so nice to see like Matt and Naeem come in mm -hmm. and, and just talk to them for a little bit. And I like I love having them around. They're so positive and they're so fun to talk to. So it's like it's it's nice to be able to have like somewhat of a balance. By the end of, by Saturday night, I was like pretty done and like tired from the whole week of like what we did. Yeah. And I got a last minute invite to go to Solvang and I was like, you know what? Just go. Because yeah. I thought like, oh, I have stuff to do. I really got to mm -hmm. work on Sunday. And I was like, you know what? Just take a personal day. Yeah. Go for the day. Go hang out. Mm -hmm. And it was great. Like getting, I, I got to meet new people and I got to just talk to them about their life and their interests and their job. And yeah. it, you, you really need to find a way to balance that out where it's like you're not just in your phone or on your computer. And I know a lot of people talk about how social media and all that stuff can be toxic. I think it really just depends on like how you consume it mm -hmm. and what you do with it. And I know it's sometimes it's really, really hard to not become obsessed with like who's liking my photo, who's commenting, your engagement, your reach and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I think it's really, really healthy to put your phone down, you know, a couple hours out of the day and just spend time with yourself. Just really reflect, think about goals, write stuff down, read, or just like make a vision board. Yeah. Or just like <laughs> honestly just call up a friend, someone who maybe you haven't talked to in a few weeks and just say like, Hey, what do you what are you up to tonight? Do you want to go get a drink? You wanna go to the movies? You wanna go get yeah. some dinner? I think that's sort I mean, we we did that a lot more before. Yeah. You and I and Zach. We haven't done that in a while. And I feel like you and I haven't done that in the longest time. We went yeah. camping is it two years now? Well, you yeah. missed out on the make and milk. <laughs> that was you don't know what spaghetti is. <laughs> spaghetti? Yeah. Spaghetti. Mika likes to drink milk with her spaghetti. I know people like this. I know people <laughs> that can't have pizza without milk. Yeah. And she like, the reason we, you know, we like start making fun of her is she doubled down on that. She was like, I'm making <laughs> I'm a stand. This. <laughs> okay. You know, when we were taking pictures of her and changing our Twitter profile picture, mine's still Mika, by the way. Um, <laughs> It wasn't because, oh, I stole one. No, she posed for that picture. Yeah. She wanted to be a representation. <laughs> you know, low-key love the attention to represent those of you who like to drink a full <laughs> glass of whole milk with Bob's as, Big Boy's as she said, Chili Spaghetti. As she said whole milk, none of that pussy shit. And I was like, oh, <laughs> she's very serious about what kind of milk, very particular about what kind of milk she drinks. But I, th I think those are extremely important yeah. to feel like a sense of community because, like, if we want to help build a community, we should – feel like for a community sure. here. Mm -hmm. um, this Saturday, mm -hmm. I'm taking the Warhammer cast to the Las Vegas Open. We're doing mm -hmm. a one-day kind of road trip. Yeah. And then, um, let's see, I did my mentoring yesterday, and then tomorrow I'm actually following up with Project Angel Food. I'm going to help prepare some nice. meals. Mm -hmm. So volunteering is another fantastic way to get out of the house. True. Um, not focus on your own sadness, you yeah. know, <laughs> things like that. And then I wanted to, like, I'm very into, like, tools and products, Somebody should sponsor me. Uh, I found this app called Scheduled, and you can schedule messages, including text messages, Facebook messages, that kind of thing. Um, one of the hard things that I have to deal with is uh, my family lives in different time zones. 
Uh, my sister, who was like my best friend growing up, is in New York. My other best friend's in New York. My other best friend's in Chicago. My parents are in Florida. You know, all this kind of stuff. And like, I don't want to wake them up or like text them at a weird time, but I'm thinking of them. Yeah. But it's oftentimes I'm thinking of them before I go to bed, which is 2 a.m. So I have that same problem. I've been doing things like where I'll schedule a text message to my sister who just got married. And I said, you know, like that's a huge change in her life. And I want to support her as like another married lady to be like, hey, do you do you want to talk to me about like marriage stuff? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just text her like, how's the married life going? But I can schedule it at a time when it's like not weird for yeah. her. Like that's yeah. like 2 a.m. <laughs> like booty call time, you know, <laughs> um, and that has kind of helped me kind of uh not only keep track of friends and like it's you know it's you know it's like now i'm going to reach out to friends and family yeah. and i can like put 10 text messages of the people that i care the most about mm -hmm. and i can schedule them and they'll follow back with me in my own time just so that like you don't go months and months not right. like talking to some of the people that you love the most mm -hmm. yeah and i felt <laughs> it's so weird it's so weird that you bring that up because mm -hmm. on saturday at the hyperdrive I got a text message from my one of my best friend's wife saying yeah. that my best friend got in a motorcycle accident yeah, geez. and he was in the hospital. So I thought like, okay, hype drive's going on. I got to mm -hmm. like figure out how to like deal with both things at the same time. So I was like checking in, making sure how he was doing and then running the hyperdrive. And then the next day, like the whole day had gone yeah. by and it was like a 10 o'clock and I was like, shit, I for totally forgot to check in to make sure how he's doing. But so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to check in. It's like, yeah. you really got to figure out a way to right. balance yeah. all right. that sort of stuff. I would like to talk about this because I think, uh, and I'll, I'll try to be quick. I, th I don't think people care when you text. I don't think sure. you have to worry about that, but it's like an anxiety that we all yeah. feel. Yeah. Uh, and I spent like two years of sure. my life being an awful friend. I feel yeah. like uh, who just didn't text back lately. I feel like I've started to get back mm -hmm. into that. Uh, but last year I was like just really diligent about like as soon as someone texts me, I'm gonna try to text back. And sometimes it feels like I'm being super like mm -hmm. needy or clingy. Or it's like why am I thinking this? They don't care. Uh, like I, I'm gonna try to text back immediately, or else I put it on the back burner and I forget. Yeah. So now I just try to just be really quick about texting if you know my phone is in front of me and someone texts me i'll text him back or you know next time i pick up my phone and i see i have a text Respond i'll spend 10 minutes like, or 10 seconds at least saying like hey i'll get back to you yeah uh and that has helped big time for just curing that anxiety of just like just do it uh but i'm getting back into that like i'm maybe a little too busy sometimes yeah. and then i see it way later and it's like well i'll, I'll text him tomorrow uh and i'm i'm trying to be less like that yeah I mean I for me the app has helped me because it's like I may be in a different headspace yeah. and then I'll be like oh just text him later tonight or tomorrow and then I forget yeah and so that yeah. way I can kind of just like put it on my kind of to do but I think I've also learned a lot from people who work here like uh Christina V is one of those people that will message or group message like a weird gif like mm -hmm. a really weird, funny gif mm -hmm. of like a puppy, like riding a unicycle and then like, I don't know, talking to a dolphin, like yeah. just like really silly stuff. Yeah. And like, I really appreciate that a lot. And I, I got a voicemail from somebody I went to grad school with that was literally like, I realize I have not talked to you in a long time. Mm -hmm. And I, w I was like, damn, like who the F like leaves voicemails anymore, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and like even Andre told me once, like, just call me. And yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. You, you take phone calls? Whoa. <laughs> I know. Whoa. Like, <laughs> um, so sometimes like you're, I think you're right. It's your own anxiety of like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be a bother. Yeah. You know? And then the other person is just like really appreciates that human connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, yeah I've only ever seen that people are, appreciative yeah i've never had anyone and maybe that's why i'm losing friends i've only i've never had anyone be like hey stop talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey quit you're annoying quit texting back so quick i mean that's the I, I feel pretty lucky because i have a group of friends in san diego who i've been friends with since i was uh, since i was a kid yeah and even when we go two to three months which is very rare that, yeah. that happens but every once in a while maybe once or twice a year it'll be two three months between text messaging each other or calling each other and I'll end up going down to San Diego to visit 
and despite the fact that like sometimes I'm all, I sometimes I, I have that anxiety I'm worried I'm like oh, I feel so bad I haven't reached out to them in months and months and mm-hmm. I text them like hey I'm gonna be in town next weekend are you free and they're like oh yeah let's go out yeah. let's go do this let's go I'm like why do I keep stressing about this I've known these people for so many mm-hmm. years at this point yeah. I should know that of course they're g- going to want to if they're in town and they're they're free yeah I mean um, adulting yeah. is hard and like maintaining friendships when the world tells you that everything else is yeah. way more important is really hard mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah so i don't know maybe this might inspire a goal this week or something yeah i mean it's kind of been my goal for the last year Mm -hmm. but i I really want to be like i want to do it more this year of i don't really take i don't really take personal time where it's just me yeah i take personal time but it's like to go hang out with like friends or to go spend time with my girlfriend or to you know you know do stuff that's usually group based but i would definitely like to have at least like one hour a day or two hours a day or maybe like five hours a week where I can just like just me Mm -hmm. maybe with my phone and my laptop or maybe just me and a book or something and just tune out the world and just have a moment where I can really reflect on like okay goals or what do I want to work on or you know just sort of think about like who have I not reached out to in a while Mm -hmm. maybe I should go hang out with this friend because I haven't seen them and I want to check in on them make sure they're doing okay there's been so many times where I've run into people here in LA and we hadn't seen each other for maybe a year. Yeah. Like, oh, we should go out and have drinks. Like we haven't caught up. Like, I don't know what you're, what you're working on or what, you know, vice versa and stuff. And sometimes that's probably like the best thing you can do for yourself. Cause it, mm-hmm. I was thinking it also makes you realize like, oh, I'm a lot more social than I think I give myself credit. Yeah. yeah. Cause a lot of times I always thought like, oh, I'm very much like an introvert. I kind of just like to keep to myself. Oh, I tell myself I hate people, but I really yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like when, when, when we went camping that weekend, I mean, it was so fun to just go out or even when we just go to Comic-Con or any yeah. convention where we're all like sharing a room together and just hanging out. It's nine times out of ten, it's a really fun experience. Always, yeah. Yeah. And then there's just that one time. <laughs> that one time at Bandcamp. Ruins camp. everything. I know. Um, so something that I'm going to talk about, we can keep it pretty brief too because it's not – I feel like this was definitely like a really good topic. and I, I Loneliness? Would, yeah, because oh. I think like I would like to circle back to it for a few months to just do check-ins even just between us mm-hmm. yeah. to see like how we're doing and all that sort of stuff because I, I think, you know, we're right when we talk about we're just so in the – grind every single day and like worrying about shows that we sometimes don't even check in on each other i mean see what people are doing i i can disclose this i've said this a few times on our twitch streams i consider myself a survivor of like really really bad anxiety disorder mm-hmm. like so bad i had like really like of life disrupting um anxiety disorder and like depression and then it kind of got diagnosed as like ptsd and Mm -hmm. then complex ptsd and whatever and like i have like i felt like hit rock bottom in my life i started having panic attacks when i was 14 uh i went i had to spend like a couple like two nights at like a the mental ward at a hospital was having a really hard time and um through like therapy and journaling and like making art which is i think extremely therapeutic um I developed what I call my internal um, hurricane watch and warning system. Mm -hmm. I'm from Florida. And so we watch these tropical waves turn into tropical storms and then sometimes hurricanes. And then there's category one, two, three, four, five. Right. And like, I think um, I'm not a mental health professional. This is just like my own anecdotal experience. But uh, I think when I was younger, like a teenager, or even like my early 20s, I like dealt when it I dealt it with it when it was a category five. When I was like, Oh no, we don't have supplies, we haven't boarded up our yeah. windows. Shit <laughs> And you have like tornado thoughts. Yeah. Like the tornado thoughts don't go away. And now I'm like trying to deal with those things when they're like a tropical depression by Africa mm-hmm. and maybe it will head your way, maybe it will develop into a horrible storm, but you can prepare now and do now to, uh, do things now to kind of prepare for that. So, um, yeah, so it's like, you know, we don't have to like hit rock bottom and be broken to like, oh, you know, maybe we should do some self-care. Yeah, you know, like? mm-hmm, for sure. And so that's why I wanted to like talk about it now. Yeah, it's a good topic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mine is completely boring and not that exciting no, compared to that. I'm very <laughs> into this kind of stuff. Um, so something that I want to touch on a little bit is Instagram has gone ahead and they deleted their IGTV button off the platform. 
Apparently, because nobody has been using because it. Because hardly anybody was using it. Because hardly anybody has been using <laughs> I it. I like this headline. And I think it's like I think it's very interesting, especially now with like how quickly TikTok has been rising. Mm -hmm. The amount of downloads of that app versus Instagram TV is like 10, 10 or hundred. Wait, 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 wait. Instagram TV was its own app. It was. I didn't even know this. Yeah, I didn't, so, I didn't even know this. Yeah, so they had you can you can still there are still. You can still upload stuff to Instagram TV directly from the Instagram yeah. app, but it has limitations. Yes. And then if you do it from the browser, uh -huh. you have even more opportunities. Yes. So like if you do it from mobile, you can only upload, I think it's up to five minutes yes. or 30 mm. minutes maybe. If you're on a browser, you can upload up to an hour's uh -huh. worth of content. Yeah. Um, but I think it's so interesting to see that like how hard Instagram was pushing Instagram TV. And it's not that they took away Instagram TV in general, because I think like a lot of really good creators are using it in a really interesting way mm -hmm. and they've really found a great way to integrate it into their Instagram feeds. I just think it's so interesting that I don't even think it's been a year. It, actually, I think it's been about a year and a half uh, since, since Instagram TV started, but I, f I, I thought a lot more people would sort of embrace what it was trying to do. I just kind of feel like it wasn't the best rollout mm -hmm. of the feature. Yeah, dude, I'll be real. I still don't know what it is and yeah. I never <laughs> checked into it. Like, yeah. I don't know how they were trying to sell it to me. Like, how? why did they expect me to go look at it? Because I never well, saw any need to. I, I think, oh, you mean the app particular or yeah. just Instagram TV? Why, why, why would I want to go watch Instagram TV other than that a few times I saw you were trying to use it with Hyper Heroes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I thought about checking it out then. That's it. Like, why else would I watch it, I guess? I Unless the creators are telling me to. I think there are certain creators that benefit from IGTV. So there are huge categories on Instagram, like um, wellness, fitness, yoga, mm -hmm. beauty. It's just a bunch of shit I don't care about, probably. Right. Well, or, or food, you know, yeah, where it's that, like I... that you... <laughs> I like to eat it, but I'm I don't to watch it. Not on Instagram. <laughs> or, or travel, you know, yeah. where a lot of people built up like a travel-minded following mm -hmm. because of beautiful travel photography, but you care enough about that travel photographer that if they put out a video of their travel to the yeah. Great Wall or something... You don't something, have to go to YouTube. You, you don't have to go right to YouTube, you can watch it right there. Or, for example, there's um, a very inspiring yoga instructor that I follow who used to be a Thai pop star. And her her yoga photography is, like, very inspiring. It's like, man, I wish I was that bendy. But then she did guided um, classes and also Instagram live streams. So she mm. used all of Instagram all features, to yeah. kind of, like, build her entire brand, which made sense. Yeah. Uh, because it's like she wasn't going to like, okay, now I'm going to be a YouTuber. Right. You know? I, I know this is just me, but like I don't, with any social media, I don't go seeking out stuff. I follow like very few people and that's what I see. And I know that that is like Instagram. Like you can search things and there's hashtags yeah. and shit. You can search to find like, you know, travel photos yep. and shit or like food photos. Mm -hmm. I don't do that ever. And I've never f ever felt the need. Yeah. And – uh, I think that that's going to die quick. I don't think people are going to be using that shit to, like, I think hashtags are on, on the decline. Yeah. I don't think people are engaging with those as much anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, tagging people doesn't seem to be doing much anymore. I don't, I, I feel like that, yeah, I think that's going downhill, and I've never liked it. Yeah, Instagram TV has been interesting. Like, I've found a few accounts who have been who have used it incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of them is Brunch Boys. It's a, it's a, He's a food, not a food yeah, creator, nice. but he basically like goes around restaurants. Yeah. And he like, he does Instagram posts about different foods and restaurants and places that he's been. I think he's found a really good way to utilize it where he can fully integrate it into his feed. Yeah. So the cover photo will usually be like the main photo on mm -hmm. the feed, yeah. but then hidden behind it is some sort of a video of him talking about, you know, the restaurant or the food or the location he's at. Yeah. So I think, I think the thing that they made a big mistake on was they didn't properly explain to people how to use the platform. Right. It was just kind of like, hey, this is here. You can watch videos on it now. And then six months later, they, add the, they added the ability for you to be able to you know, watch stuff in, in, in landscape mode. Yeah. But they never really communicated properly to people like how you should use it to help benefit your Instagram like page or feed. Yeah. 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 They announced uh, a bunch of like different shows that people were doing and like those things fell off immediately. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I don't want to check yeah. out. Like, 
I, mean, I would rather just see what people are up to. You yeah. know? I feel I have mixed feelings about this because there are other platforms that we've participated in, like Twitch or even YouTube. YouTube has a pretty <laughs> good creator academy mm. that kind of teaches you like how to make content that YouTuber viewers want to watch yeah. and how you can like climb the algorithm and how you can make your videos searchable to the right people that are trying to find your topic. Um, but I think with... Um, <clears throat> And I talked to uh, Black Nerd Comedy about this too, where it's like creators aren't making these creator platforms. Engineers are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes an engineer's thinking about it is like they'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, like who are we to like define stories are about narrative stories. So mm -hmm. if your stories don't link from like beginning, middle and end, then you're using Instagram stories right. wrong. Um, but at the same time, it's like if you don't have a guide, it kind of like lowers the quality overall on the entire platform mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i think it's really tough too because i think a lot of the creators who i like to watch they make content for youtube primarily mm -hmm. so now a lot of them have tried to figure out ways of like well how do i take that and apply it to something like instagram tv because yeah i don't necessarily want to just have 60 second little clips or vignettes i want to have like a full five minute video or two and a half minute discussion piece and some of them have really been able to figure out how to repurpose the footage and format it in an interesting way where you can have like little titles and, mm -hmm. and captions and stuff like that so it's like yeah there's a lot of creators who i'm not necessarily going to their instagram feed for videos yeah but if there's a great um, video hidden behind a photo and I discover it that way then like to me that's a great use of Instagram TV it's it shouldn't be some sort of like additional main feature it should support the stuff that's already on there and mm -hmm. like Instagram will always be about the feed and I know a lot of people sometimes they they change sort of their their flavor of the week changes sometimes they're about the story sometimes they're about the feed and sometimes it depends sometimes it's both but I think like Instagram TV has a very particular role and I think it's to just support both. Yeah. And I think if you can figure out a really nice way of balancing that and how you can use both platforms to your advantage, then I think that's the best way to use it. But I think them removing the IGTV button off of the interface to me is not a big deal because no matter what, if the creator that I like posts something and has a really great co cover photo that sort of fits the overall aesthetic of, of their feed and like their brand, then I'll probably end up watching it. But yeah, I agree. I don't go seeking out i do i do for me it really depends <laughs> but i usually will go by location yeah so if i if someone asks me or someone mentions a bar to me or something i will look for that bar on instagram oh, yeah and then look at the photos true i'll do that you know? i'll do that but i don't find myself um <clears throat> scrolling platforms like any platforms to just discover things mm -hmm. Uh, I am only ever seeking stuff out specifically. Right. You know what I mean? If I'm on YouTube, I'm either watching people who I'm subscribed to or I'm searching for something. Exactly. Instagram, yep. I'm just like, oh, what are my friends up to? Or, yep. you know. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm never going to like the search Explore. on Instagram and scrolling. I know people do that, uh, but I, I'm never doing that with apps. Yeah. And I don't think it's, yeah, I, I don't know how much that's wanted or how long that will last or mm. be a thing of like discovering things. I think that's kind of like what I do enjoy about TikTok, TikTok for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The for you stuff, depending on how you sort of influence the algorithm, it'll start catering things more for yep. you. So it's like you have one tab, stuff you follow. Yeah. The other tab is like stuff that like, based on everything that you've interacted with, like this is what we're gonna start recommending. It's a lot cleaner. Yeah, and specifically, I'm just kind of jaded by Instagram shit. Cause like when I do see that, yeah. stuff like in the search bar you know it's stuff with like two hundred thousand likes that yeah so this is someone's job and they're yeah. they're trying i feel like i'm being like caught up in yeah. some advertising <laughs> scheme i'm like get the fuck out of here i don't want your stupid products oh, don't you hate it when it's the same product but it's a different name yeah oh my mm. god yeah that's that's you're like i'm i'm not a schmuck you're not gonna suck me in yeah <laughs> you can't fool me uh Anything else? That's it. Okay. Well, mine's also pretty quick. Uh, there was an Esquire article. Um, Cloverfield was the last time Hollywood truly surprised us. Oh, uh, I don't agree. With a well, uh, and specifically, they're talking about how the trailer didn't give us anything. We didn't. A, a lot of us went and saw Cloverfield, mm. yeah. not knowing at all what it was about. Mm. Right. It had a viral marketing campaign. Uh, basically, I don't know if you remember the trailer. Oh, it I do. It was <laughs> like uh, the Statue of Liberty, Liberty being hurled. <laughs> Uh, and then cut to black, yeah. and it was like a 10-second trailer. Whoa, and that, what? What, what that is that? What's happening? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I disagree also. Uh, I think... Knives Out, great example. Really? Trailer, I still haven't seen it. 
Oh, um, I think oh, uh, Lucas. Cabin in the Woods is a good example too. Oh, a yeah. lot of people didn't know what that was going to be, uh, but still, I I do think that there is something to this article. I, I'm not even going to get into the article at all, but it's basically like what has the internet done to like, is this even possible to pull off anymore uh, with, yeah. you know, the way that we, the press for movies is and the, like, I don't know, uh, even, even now, whenever there is a big twist in a movie, you've got people being like, you know, reviewers being like, stick around for the twist. It's not <laughs> right. at all what you expected. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. just by saying that I'm a million things have gone just off my head and it. I've probably predicted one of the outcomes yeah. and I've actually, I do, I can't expect it. Don't, don't tell me that. <laughs> I avoid watching trailers. Yeah. I avoid watching a lot of stuff. Yeah. I oftentimes, you know what I, I do? I go to the Rotten Tomatoes website. I see what has an upward trend and I'm like, these are probably solid. People are usually pretty harsh on Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah. if it has a nine year above, it's probably decent. And yeah. we have AMCA list. So it's like, I'm not paying for this. Yeah. Um, and then I just go watch the things. I think I just watched, what did I watch with you, Zach, where I was like, I don't even watch the trailer. I don't even know what this movie's about. Like, the, yeah, 1917. 1917. I, no, I, yeah. no, 1917. I seen the trailer because it was in so many uh, things, but there's a few, um, yeah, yeah. well, that's just I'm like I'll, I don't I'll I don't watch a ton mind. of trailers either uh, unless you know it's something that we're watching here mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah the, I mean the article kind of points out that like the way that you know Twitter has changed a lot of things we're following every step of production for a movie yes. and if we're not then it's kind of considered bad marketing if you're not just constantly building the hype this is my uh, hell that I live in and I was curious <laughs> is there any sort of I don't know. Do you guys have any ideas for do it, pulling something off like that in the modern age of like, can you keep a movie completely secret and build up enough hype around it, keeping it completely secret? I mean, we kind of had that with the Cloverfield, the Cloverfield movie that went straight to Netflix. Uh, what was that one called? Uh, Paradox. But it was something? bad. It I heard, was, it was, and that was, was like that's good. the thing too. Is like yeah. I immediately heard it was bad. So I was like, like I'm not how watch could, it. could you make a Mission Impossible movie that like? On Monday, you don't know it exists, and on Tuesday, like it comes out Wednesday. Yeah, and night. Netflix has done that. Yeah, and you can do that with like, yeah, maybe Netflix is the answer, and you have a bunch of big names that are like, hey, this movie just dropped. Yeah. You know, like a sing- a simple tweet mm-hmm. that like builds up a lot of hype. El Camino kind of did that, Breaking Bad. Yeah, Breaking it did. Bad movie. Yep. Um, but even then, it You're was, like, I don't think it was. You know what Breaking level. Bad is? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's like there is a, there definitely is a part of me that wishes that. That was a. I look at Star Wars, for example. Yeah. Like, there are parts of me that, that really do wish that we could have had just like 30 second, minute long little trailers. Yeah. I think Avengers Endgame probably did it the best. Yeah. They really kept a lot of stuff oh, hidden. Their, their trailers were all very of their short. marketing was really they good. Reper- they like redid shots and they would tweak them so they fit the trailer so they don't ruin the story. Yeah. I feel like that's probably one of the better examples of a movie that really was like, they gave their audience nothing. Yeah, I, I, I didn't watch any promotional material for Lighthouse. Mm. Lighthouse. Yeah, I, d- yeah. I was like, "What is this movie? It's black and white. He's jerking off. There's a mermaid." <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, I'll go. It was watch great. It. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. I'm sold. Oh, uh, well, like you didn't watch Lighthouse. Did some of these movies um, not capture your interest through a trailer, and so that's why you didn't watch the movie? I have not watched movies because I'm broke. <laughs> And I don't have time. Uh, and watching a trailer and then not going to see the movie makes me sad. So oh. I try not to watch trailers if I know I'm not going to go watch the movie. Uh, but, yeah, I think also another thing that I, I, I don't know if it's – I think also The Blair Witch was another example. And these are both found footage movies. And yeah. I wonder if the found footage style – can generate that kind of hype and you want to have District that kind of mystery. Kind of did that. Yeah, you want to kind of have that kind of mystery of like this is a real thing. So we're mm-hmm. not going to tell you too much cuz the government doesn't want you to know about yeah. it kind of thing. Um I don't know. What was it's that movie? Just an interesting thought of uh, like these the, yeah, I mean, the marketing of the internet has changed so much. Is there a next step where someone can do something like this and it can blow up? Yeah, I don't know. It's t- it's a tough and it's like something that like I talk to Hector and Augustine about all the time yeah. because people always put this pressure on us of like, we, we want we want you to know all the details of every movie and exactly mm-hmm. how it's being made. And da, da, da. I'm like, I don't, but I don't want to know it. Yeah. yeah, I want to go into the like I'll watch the trailers, but I don't want to read the spoilers. I don't want to know yeah. every character that's in the movie. I don't want the surprises spoiled for me before I go watch it. Yeah, so it's like a really tough balance, and which is why I'm glad that once we came here, it was like we're not a news. 
right. show. We don't do news. We talk about stuff in the context of like what we know about it. Right. I um I was a little upset that Zach told me what Parasite was about because oh, I had okay. seen other people who I respect, like other actors and director friends of mine who are like, you really got to watch this movie. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I did not seek out any trailers or anything because I'm like, oh, this is supposed to be a good one. And Zach's like, it's about this family. And I'm like, mm-hmm. la, 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 yeah. la, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But I think it's a really great question. Yeah, I, I, I think in some regard we take steps backwards in that, like, you know, we have to f- feed this hype machine until yeah. the movie comes out from announced date to coming out. It's like, but I do think that, like, withholding information could be super powerful. Mm-hmm. If you're putting out the right info, you could create more hype i think yeah. and you're withholding a lot um I agree. can i tell you as the person that works with zach on social media for Colock, this is like a huge struggle mm-hmm. because we need people to like show up live that's like our hugest metric and our hugest kind of like conversion in terms of like what we are as a business and why we do it mm-hmm. but zach is always like no don't tell them don't tell them about the surprise don't tell them about the surprise yeah. so like yeah like what do you have to work with them right so then i'm kind of like f so, like, all I get to say is, like, well, these people are coming. Yeah. Or, you know, hoping that, like, the reaction after the surprise, after the episode, will get people to want to show up. Right. Mm-hmm. But by then, those people haven't, like, they didn't get to watch it live. Mm-hmm. Right. So, it's extremely hard to market Colock. Right. Yeah, and that's sort of, like, in comparison to movies, that's sort of, like, your opening weekend. Like, the live audience is your opening weekend. Mm-hmm. And then the next week is, like, your YouTube views. Because uh, sometimes, like, these, these movies that weren't, necessarily like hype marketed like from start to finish uh then they have a really big second weekend because the word has gotten out that yeah. it's mm-hmm. so good yeah yep. it's like oh i didn't even expect that that movie should be on my radar yeah. you know i think parasite has been doing way better yeah. since all of these awards and yeah. hype uh after it's come out not yeah. the pre-build up no exactly. one knew what it was going to be exactly um, i read uh earlier last week that apparently the greatest showman was a sleeper hit and that's why they thought like maybe cats would do well have you had, did you hear this no i never okay. saw that movie i like i got fascinated with cats once we did a parody of it on our best picture hyperdrive mm. and i i was like so puzzled because everybody was like how did this happen millions of dollars like didn't they know better the fact that they had to like redo the visual effects and like update the versions people are showing in theater is just craziest Mm -hmm. and i wanted to know like what was the thinking behind this Mm -hmm. and apparently some of it was well the greatest showman was a sleeper hit it uh, did really well with young women and I'm guessing they did not ask a lot of young men, women for their opinion. And they were like, well, young women like Taylor Swift. She'll write an original song for a Broadway classic. And oh, it'll do great. And it was, oh, it was a flop. But uh, yeah, I wonder, it's, it's interesting about like sleeper hits, mm-hmm. things yeah. that get popular later, yeah. what becomes a cult classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Super interesting. But yeah, I don't know. It's something definitely to think about. And I, I know for us, it's like a tough thing to think about too, especially for story driven i mean for post ghosts it's also like how do you advertise that one because it's like you're developing the story as the story's happening yeah but you also need to give the audience some sort of context right because yeah, yeah why would they wa- otherwise want to come that's and watch? Exactly. why i think it's really important to build us as a brand mm-hmm. so it's kind of like studio ghibli is one of the studios that i admire and love the most and now it could be anything doesn't matter i don't what even have yeah and it doesn't matter what they put out i'm gonna watch it because mm-hmm. i know it's brand gonna be loyalty. a great story yes yeah. yes 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 so i think pixar is another one mm-hmm. uh disney has a certain level quality with mm-hmm. like pretty much all its stuff Marvel where studios Yes, yes. So, like, if we, you know, <clears throat> if we kind of become this destination as we're hoping to be on Twitch for, like, really good stories, then, like, people just show up. Yeah. I mm-hmm. hope. That's agreed, the plan. Agreed. Uh, before we go, let's rapid fire through a couple of these Patreon yeah. questions. The first question from Ronan Unchained. Will Hyper RPG do more crossover media storytelling the same way you folks worked in Connected Power Rangers and Rat Queens? I would love it if Hyper RPG teamed up with Lucasfilm and did another RPG show and intertwined it with a comic book or series of books. Oh, yeah, no, just let me text my friend, yeah. George Lucas. <laughs> we went to the same college together. <laughs> that's right. Oh, no, he's asking about Lucasfilm. Oh, my oh, film. Oh, 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 yours. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And yes, we will be teaming up. <laughs> Excited to announce. <laughs> no, but I mean, like... You I mean, banker ranch. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeehaw. <laughs> I mean, you know... You can speak to this more than I can, sure. but, I, but I would imagine like if someone comes to us with the opportunity, if Lucasfilm were to be like, hey, we really like the stuff you've done and you, that you're doing, let's do a Star Wars thing. Would we say no? 
I, I, I doubt it unless the terms were like really, really one-sided. I mean, mm-hmm. Altered Carbon, official one-shot RPG, yeah. uh, oh, first Wednesday exactly. in we February. So we yeah, always got stuff. Yeah. That, that's a thing I can talk about right now, and there's mm-hmm. other stuff that I'm working on. Yeah. So the answer is yes, we would love yes, to. Yes, we would love mm-hmm. to. If, the, if, the, if, if you are an IP holder, George, call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if, if, if the terms are right, then of course we would yeah. do it. Uh, from Calvin Hunt, is there anything you feel is missing in the industry to help creators and studios like Hyper, Hyper RPG grow and collaborate with each other? As it seems from the outside perspective, they exist in isolation from each other. Well, we were it's just talking question. about loneliness. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think uh twitch can help with discoverability yep it's mm. like the number That's what one I was gonna say. thing yeah. mm-hmm. it's very frustrating to be on this platform where you can't even like really search no. what, what you want to find yes um and yeah i think they need to solve that because yeah. i think that's an issue across the entire platform yeah yeah that's not just for us but yeah i, d- I think it hurts us harder than a yeah. lot because we're not doing stuff that y- you can search for mm-hmm. uh so how, how do i search interactive interesting high production yeah. story Haunting driven spooky story. thing on yeah. Twitch. Yeah, that's a really challenge. I yeah. guarantee you could put that in your search bar and we would not be in the top 100 no. results. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. It would be confusing just come back error. Yeah. I know for like from the YouTube side at least, I know YouTube as a as or Google as a company, they try to put on events where they invite creators to at the YouTube at, space is at, pretty at cool. At YouTube space, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say the the challenge with that and, I, and I'm sure it's also because there are so many people on YouTube how do you like how do you um keep track of and how do you like facilitate sending an invite to 10,000 creators and then having a space big enough for all those people to come together and mm-hmm. I, i'm sure that's like a really big that's a really hard thing to do but it also feels like whenever i've tried to go to some of these events all these events are meant for people who are like at the top tier echelon yeah. of youtubers and like the 1% of the most successful and it's like those people probably all know each other right. anyway. Yep. So I, I would say really focus on those like mid to lower tier creators yeah. and do multiple events throughout the year where people can sort of like get to know each other. I mean, where we live, there are YouTubers who live around us, but like we never engage with them because the platform itself doesn't really like facilitate something like that. And yeah. like if, if either we could find a way or we can encourage creators or, or do something where we can make that happen, then... Yeah, like we would love to be able to collaborate with more people. Andre had been wanting to be on Hyper Heroes for the longest time. And we had like talked about it in passing a few times. But yeah, there's like no way for us to outside of like an email or a text message to really find ways of collaborating on stuff. It's just us having to go back and forth of like, well, what can we do? We could do this. We could do that. But yeah, I think like that overall, I think that's just kind of like a a goal that we have is we want to collaborate with more people and we want to build these relationships and like connect other people together. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think like now that we've had, you know, Ethan on, on stuff and so Hinky and all these like great Mm -hmm. creators who do so many different things in their own right. It's allowed us to be able to connect to a lot more people and bring people here together. Yeah. Um, Also, I think brands have the power to bring certain creators together. And we see that more in other spaces, Mm -hmm. like beauty or something, where they'll send all these beauty people to the same retreat. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would love to see that more in gaming, in movies, kind of the categories that we exist in. Yeah, and studios try to do that with like Blu-ray releases and early screenings and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of there. Yeah. But yeah, I would like to see that that like really encourages people to because you go to a movie screening, you show up, you talk to the people in line, you go sit down, you watch the movie, and then you leave. Yeah, yeah. like the, some the car f- what thing was really yeah, cool. like yeah. some of the stuff that we've done has really been sort of event based, and people can really spend hours talking to each other, hanging out, which I which I think is really really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see from Tom Clough. On average, how long does it take to get a show in production from initial thoughts or concept? That's a very case by case basis. I uh, like. yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that depends on if it's like live or if it's for YouTube. I know we've done stuff for YouTube that it was like mm-hmm. oh, we got this idea, let's shoot it tomorrow. Yeah. And then, It'd be like yeah, and then you a, a few edit hours it all night, and then it goes up the next day. And yeah. Or like when Zach was like, "I'm gonna do Game Masters. It's gonna be a podcast." It yeah. was yeah. like the night before. And then other things like Warhammer. We worked on the Warhammer metagame for a year. Oh my gosh! And uh, we were, we're currently it. working on another version of the Warhammer metagame, and we've been working on it for like two mm-hmm. months. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, that can, that just, 
show development with an extra element of interactivity takes playtesting, uh, months of like behind the scenes practicing and stuff for like the the performance and stuff. So it, yeah, it can vary just depending on the project. Yeah. But then you know a show like our Witcher RPG, it was just like the week before we asked Emily if she wanted to put together a Witcher RPG. Yeah. And she said yes. And then we <laughs> had to like find the people to fill out. The, yeah. Yeah. It was very fast. Yeah. Yep. Uh, final question. Adding to what others have asked, would it be more beneficial to you guys for those of us who can for those who, for those of us who can only afford one to sub to Patreon or Twitch? Thanks for the time and effort you all put into making great interactive entertainment. So money wise, we get a greater cut from a five dollar um, Patreon supporter mm-hmm. than a five dollar Twitch supporter. That being said, there are a lot of benefits wrapped into you being a Twitch subscriber. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that also increases your kind of connectivity to our very active Twitch audience. And um, in terms of supporting us, there's a lot more than just like, you know, opening up your wallets and being generous. It's contributing to the conversation is actually probably even bigger yeah. than just, you know, a few bucks. So if you're on a budget, but you really want to help out, you know, contributing to the conversation is huge. For yeah. Sure. Um, and then, of course, your eyeballs, the views, telling your friends, that's enormous. Yeah. And I would say like if... If you watch all of our stuff, uh, regardless of if it's like Twitch or YouTube or in the podcast network, it doesn't really matter how you support us. We're going to be very grateful. But if you're specifically watching like Twitch or YouTube, uh, Patreon for YouTube, if you're here for trailer reactions and hyper heroes, hit them up on Patreon and show these guys your love uh, because that is where we're sort of we're taking that money so we can work on our YouTube development. So if you want to see more YouTube stuff, hit them up on Patreon. If you're really loving our Twitch stuff, subscribe over there. Yeah. Uh, or if you just want to tweet, that's also really cool. Yeah, tweet at us. Yeah, do have spread a, the word. Yeah, we do have a lot of people who ask that question. Mm-hmm. And it's like, look, if you can't, don't feel pressure to. It's not It's not a requirement. If you just want to tweet something or Instagram something, like we've seen the last few weeks how many people put stuff on their personal accounts on, whether it's like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, mm-hmm. Twitter. That's, that's also really, really great. And yeah. I just want to remind people, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to our Twitch channel for free. Yes, yes. Boom. Oh. All right, so before we get out of here, Malika, do you want to take something from your article and tie it into some sort of the, a challenge? The for pressure the is on, I guess. <laughs> um, it was just a really good topic. It is a really great topic, and um, I, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys want to do? I mean, honestly. Because I don't know. I said vision board, and you're all groaned, so the, I'm going to put the pressure on somebody else. I would else. honestly say, like, the simple challenge of, like, reaching out to somebody who you haven't talked to or spent time with in a while and just spending an evening with them. Whether okay. it's just like going to dinner, going to have a drink, or whatever it is. I mean, like like I mentioned earlier, like I haven't even done that with Lucas, and I see him literally every single day. Mm. So you guys are going to hang out, and then I'll try to see if my husband wants to do something. <laughs> He's shaking his Jesus head. Jesus Christ. All right, and uh, the challenge goes out to you in the audience as well. Yeah, Good luck. Yeah. Then we can, we can reconnect and talk about it next week. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're listening on the podcast version, jump over to YouTube to check out. You guys will have some visual references as well. If you want to check out the podcast, links is always down below. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.